This episode of Taz I Help is brought to you by GoDaddy. What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be comparing the Kindle Fire versus the iPad 2 and hopefully help you make your decision on which one of these you should buy. Alright, so let's get started comparing these two. Now I know a lot of people have said you cannot compare the Kindle Fire to the iPad 2 because they're two completely different devices. But, in my opinion, they're both tablets, you're both wanting them for the same thing, you're wanting media consumption to watch videos and browse the web and read books and movies and stuff like that. You want them for the same purpose, but they are obviously two different prices made by two completely different companies, they're different sizes, they're different operating systems, and they work completely differently. But they give you the same effect, or you're buying them for the same reason. So that's what I'm going to be comparing it as. I'm going to be telling you which one I think you should get uh, for who you are. So first off, we're going to talk specs, models, and prices, and stuff like that, just because we have to. First off, the iPad 2 comes in black and white. Kindle, you just get one color of it. Uh, the iPad 2 starts out at 500 bucks for the Wi-Fi model, uh, and it goes all the way up from there. There's a 3G and Wi-Fi model, whereas the Kindle is only Wi-Fi, and they only have one model for 200 bucks. So You've got more choices with the iPad uh, as far as uh, size and storage because the iPad will give you 16, 32, and 64 gigabytes, whereas the Kindle is uh, 8 gigabytes, but it's more based on the cloud, which Apple's moving towards the cloud. Anyway, so they're both kind of the same uh, in that sense, and I don't think storage space really matters now. Now, obviously, there's a size difference here. The Kindle is 7 inches, whereas the iPad 2 is 9.7 inches. So uh, there's obviously a size difference, uh, and I think the iPad weighs like 46% heavier, uh, but um, you're obviously going to have a heavier device when you have a bigger screen. So it's really your preference uh, on screen size. I like the 7-inch screen, and I also like the iPad screen. Battery life goes something like this. You're going to get 8 hours on the Kindle Fire and around 10 hours on the iPad 2, depending on what you're doing. Obviously, you get a front and back-facing camera on the iPad 2, whereas on the Kindle Fire, there are no cameras, which isn't a bad thing. I never use the camera on my iPad anyways, and it's awkward to do it anyway. Now that we're through with all these spec crap, which I don't think personally matters because consumers don't really care about specs. Every tablet that comes out now is going to be fast no matter what, uh, and they really just want to play games and have a fun device that actually works and is easy to use. Just my opinion. Uh, so first off, we'll start off with that, uh, actually, apps. So the Kindle Fire actually has Amazon's App Store. This is running Android, uh, but it's not actually Android App Store. It's Amazon's App Store, so you're not going to have as big a selection of apps. But I did go through here, uh, if you actually go into the store, there is a wide selection. I went on the games tab and scrolled and scrolled and scrolled on the all tab and went through over 500 games. Obviously there's probably like hundreds of thousands of games on the uh, Apple App Store, but uh, you still are going to get a good, good choice of games. Uh, from what I've seen and from what I've played around with, games run uh, just as good on the Kindle Fire. Uh, sometimes the Kindle Fire is laggy, uh, just with touch, I don't know how well you can tell that. But, I mean, that may be something they can fix or just maybe because they're running an old version of Android. This is running Android 2.3 with just uh, Amazon skin over it. Uh, so, app-wise, obviously you're going to get a better selection with the iPad. You're going to get some better games. you got the bigger screen, uh, so the games are probably going to look better uh, and maybe even work better. But, either way, games are going to work great on both devices. So, if you're buying the Kindle Fire or the iPad 2 for games, apps, and stuff like that, both should suit you well, but obviously you're going to get a better choice with the iPad 2. Now, like I mentioned before, this is running Android and this is iOS. So it's two completely different operating systems and this isn't even exactly Android because it's running their skin over it, which looks completely different. Uh, so you're getting two completely different feels. So it's really uh, what you're used to. I'm used to iOS. I prefer their layout much better. I like how Amazon uh, did the Kindle Fire's layout where you can scroll back and forth, but I don't know, something about it isn't appealing to me, just how the icons are different sizes, it doesn't look clean, uh, there's definitely uh, some improvements to be made here, whereas the iPad, it's a simple, clean layout, you know how it works right when you pick it up, and it's just easy to use. So, Amazon, you could do some improvements on like the user interface and stuff like that, whereas Apple has it nailed down uh, to a T. I do like, though, that Amazon added the search bar up here to the top, as well as all the categories here at the top with newsstand, books, music, video, docs, apps, and web. I kind of like that, just... Something around, like around in this region needs to change for me to like it better. Either way, you're still going to be able to access everything. It just 
may not look as pretty on the Kindle Fire. Now let's take a look at the web browsers on these two. I'm going to open it up on the Kindle Fire and the iPad 2. I don't know if you've seen that, but there's just, like, overall, there's a lag in the Kindle Fire. It doesn't really bother me that much. Maybe it's just because I'm used to the super snappiness of the iPad, uh, and maybe I'm just used to the gestures and stuff on it, but I don't know. Anyways, uh, I'm not really going to do a speed test. I will do one for you. I'll just load up my website here. I have it bookmarked. Um, I haven't cleared cache on the Kindle Fire or anything like that, so I'm not doing this for a speed test. That's not what this video is about. Uh, so let me find my website and doop, and there we go. So it seems like uh, the, actually the Kindle Fire beat it there. But uh, I don't know. It seems like the iPad is a little bit faster. Okay, actually the, the iPad did kill it there. Now one thing about this web browser is this thing has Flash, which uh, I don't know. I think Apple did a good thing with not putting Flash uh, on the iPad, which Flash actually is getting killed anyways on mobile devices. But I don't know. The web browser on both are great. I prefer the iPad's web browser because it is a bigger screen, so I like to browse the web on it. It just seems easier. And sometimes these little tabs up here, it's just too small for me to tap. Uh, I don't know. It's just something about the web browser on this thing that I don't like. Now, Amazon did introduce a thing called Silk, which basically is it loads everything on their servers, which is supposed to make it faster. But as you've seen there, it's not really any faster. In some cases, it's slower. Um, it does work good. Uh, Flash videos like YouTube, I have played that. Uh, those work fine. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I would rather do it on the iPad. If I want to, I can actually... Uh, full screen this with here I don't think I really can do that I may be able to okay I can but uh, I don't know I still prefer doing it on the iPad that's just my opinion so basically the web browsers they're gonna give you the same thing just different layouts and different ways to interact with it I prefer the iPads method but I will have to say I do like being able to hold this in my hand uh, and browse the web rather than doing it on the iPad but I like looking at the iPad screen better uh, because it's bigger and it's, it's better to browse on so I don't know there's kinda pluses and negatives to both you'll have to decide on that and now let's talk about content such as magazines and books and music and videos stuff like that with uh, the iPad, they're a little bit more strict on what you can do with the content you get. Uh, as for example, uh, with the newsstand, which both has, uh, if you buy it from here on the iPad and get it from Apple, you're pretty much stuck to just ha using it uh, on your iPad. With the Kindle, you can use this anywhere. Uh, same goes with books. If you download it on the Kindle Fire, you can download it on your iPhone or your iPad in the Kindle uh, app if you want to. So you're a little bit more free as far as like uh, magazines and books on the Kindle. Uh, now music and video and stuff like that, that's pretty much the same. Uh, but now one thing is with this, if you like start watching a video on the Kindle Fire, then you pick it up on your computer, or I think even your Roku, it'll continue playing where you left off. So content on these things, uh, Apple is going to be a little bit more strict, whereas Amazon is a little bit, more, a little bit more open. You are going to get everything like Hulu Plus and Netflix and stuff like that via downloadable apps. So you're not really going to be constricted with any content. You'll still be able to get uh, most of the stuff. Another downfall to the Kindle Fire is that you won't get access to Apple's uh, iTunes and stuff like that because they do have a bigger choice of uh, movies, at least in my opinion, or from what I know. Uh, but Amazon does have a big selection of video uh, that you can rent, like movies and TV shows, and they have their Prime Instant Videos, which if you're an Amazon Prime member, you're going to get these for free. So there's pluses and negatives to both. You're really going to get about the same thing, like if you're a Netflix or Hulu Plus subscriber, uh, you're going to be able to watch both of those here. So really content uh, as far as video, uh, you're pretty much going to get the same thing. Uh, it's just one is a little bit more strict than the other. Now that we've covered the content, I did want to go back and mention these are tablets. They're both the same thing. You're both buying it for the same reason. But like the iPad is going to have simple little things that's different. Uh, just like iMessage because you can message other iOS devices whereas the Kindle Fire doesn't really have anything like that. There may be some text message app on the Kindle Fire that I don't know about in the Amazon App Store. Uh, but I don't know, just something simple like that that you're going to get on the iPad that you wouldn't get uh, on the Kindle Fire that Apple's going to provide because they got their synchronization with all of their Apple devices, whereas this is Amazon's first device, our first tablet that they've done. All right, so let me try to answer the question, which is probably the reason you watch this video, which one of these should you get, the Kindle Fire or the iPad 2? Personally, I think they're both great devices. I think they're both going to offer you really the same thing. It's just two different price points from two different companies. With the iPad, it's obviously 
obviously going to be better. You're going to have a better user experience with just the whole layouts uh, on the iPad, but you are going to pay 500 bucks. But you may want to pay 500 bucks for uh, the Apple ecosystem and and uh, just the ease of use of it and all the apps and the different little things you can get on the iPad that you can't get on the Kindle Fire. But if you're buying one of these for media consumption, like music videos, apps, web browsing, stuff like that, which I don't really know what other reason you buy these for, <laughs> uh, then you may want to go with the Kindle Fire because it is only $200 compared to $500 on the iPad. It's smaller, so it really depends which size of device you want. Do you want the 9.7 inch screen or do you want the 7 inch screen? This I would rather carry around with me more than the iPad, but the iPad is better to use uh, for gaming and web browsing and stuff like that. It really comes down to, I think, how much money you have to spend. I think you're going to be uh, pleased uh, very well with $200 for the Kindle, uh, and if you do have the extra money to spend on the iPad 2, 500 bucks will get you a good bit more and a better experience. Now, who do I think these devices are better for? Kindle Fire, I think, is aimed at old people. No offense, old people. But, uh, for example, or not old people, just somebody that used Kindle in the past. It's not really experienced. Uh, whereas they think, ah, oh, the iPad, that's got too much stuff. I don't, I don't want all that. But the Kindle Fire seems to them like an upgrade from a Kindle. If they've used the Kindle uh, ebook readers, they might they may be like wanting something more, uh, wanting to do more on their Kindle. So they're like, hey, it's is an ebook reader, which is I think the reason or the point Apple uh, not Apple Amazon is going to sell this as. So they may be like, hey, only two hundred dollars and I can get a Kindle with more features on it. So I think that's going to be the big selling point with the Kindle Fire uh, from what I've seen so far. That's what they're doing. They're not really trying to sell this thing as a tablet but more as an upgraded ebook reader. So that's going to be great for people that like the Kindles uh, that don't want to spend $500 on an iPad whereas the $200 price point is going to be great for them. Alright, let's take a quick break to look at our sponsor for this video and that is GoDaddy. Get reliable and secure hosting without the long-term contract. GoDaddy's hosting plans are bigger and better than ever with 99.99% uptime, 24-7 support, and no annual commitment. You can also download GoDaddy's free iPhone, Android, or Blackberry app to make orders right from your phone, manage your current domains, and more. For Ties I Help viewers, you can get your very own domain name for only $7.99 if you use the code tie 3 at checkout. Also, don't forget to check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for all the amazing GoDaddy deals from Revision 3. So hopefully this video and my opinions has helped you decide which one of these is right for you or which one you should get. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you have any responses or your own opinions or feedback for me because I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the like button down below. I really appreciate it and it really helps me out a lot lot. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube because that will let you know when I post new videos like these. Stay tuned for my review of the Kindle Fire and lots more videos to come and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.